This is the To Health With That, Naturally Healthy in No Time podcast for big health topics taken in small bites. I'm your host, naturopathic doctor Amy Nuzel, and this is season one, all about the MTHFR mutation. This week, we're going to talk about other things that might be helpful for MTHFR outside of folate, because starting folate supplementation is kind of a perilous journey in this adventure, and we'll start that perilous journey next week. It is really easy to jump to the idea that it's all about folate when you have an MTHFR issue, because let's face it, the enzyme is actually about activating folate. So of course, folate is the point. I will concede the logic of that argument, but clinically, so many factors go into a healthy methylation cycle that starting with folate is kind of like building the roof of the house before you dig the foundation. You'll remember we talked about it a few weeks ago, how crucial the other B vitamins are to the whole process. They appear many times more in the chemical chain of events than folate or B12 do. So clearly all of the B vitamins need to be supplemented before you even think about adding folate, but hopefully after you have eliminated the toxic folic acid from your diet and tried enhancing natural food sources of folate. If you don't know what I'm talking about or don't know why I'm saying the things I'm saying, check out our Start Here guide to MTHFR on tohealthwiththat.com. So the B vitamins are crucial, but other things matter too. Because this pathway is complex and connected to some of your most vital body functions. Therefore, it needs diverse nutrition. So if you're wondering what else to take for MTHFR besides folate, it's a really mixed bag. I would say number one is choline. Choline is an essential nutrient. We can make some, but not enough to meet our daily needs. It's also intimately tied to folate status and MTHFR. Choline in your body is used to make a variety of substances. Acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter, phosphatidylcholine, betaine, sphingomyelin. They're important for muscle function, brain function, membrane integrity, cellular signaling, fat transport, and metabolism. Choline isn't necessary for all people to supplement or all MTHFR folks to supplement, but it's a good idea to take a look at your diet and symptoms to see if you might need more. The foods highest in choline, like liver and eggs, are animal products, so vegetarians might be at higher risk for deficiency. And deficiency symptoms are rare, but the most notable is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, which is actually quite common in MTHFR folks. Choline function is linked to folate status, especially in MTHFR. So if you're having fatty liver issues or if you've hit a roadblock and hadn't tried choline, it could be a good next step. And with choline, The recommended daily intake is about 550 milligrams per day, but it's a bit of a moving target. Magnesium is the second thing that I think actually, not just MTHFR folks, but pretty much all humans should consider taking. Magnesium is one of the most important nutrients in terms of body functioning, and it's involved in about 80% of all metabolic processes. Every enzyme that uses or makes ATP, which is your cellular energy source, is magnesium dependent, so without magnesium, no energy for your cells. And ATP itself is usually bonded to magnesium in something called a chelate. So basically, without magnesium, the wheels come off the cart fast. Plus, most adults are magnesium deficient, an estimated 60%. Boosting magnesium is less about being healthy with MTHFR and more just about being healthy as a human. Magnesium status is linked to diseases like heart disease, atherosclerosis, endothelial dysfunction, arterial stiffening and hypertension, type 2 diabetes and insulin resistance, migraines, depression, and basically every other major disease humans get. I also have a shocking graph showing the difference in nutritional value specifically relating to mineral nutrients between vegetables in 1914 and vegetables in 2018. That brief century has brought the nutritional values down by 80 to 90 percent, which is terrifying. So even if you're eating all the right foods, you're not getting the same nutritional value from them that you would have a century ago, which maybe explains why so many of us are deficient. Magnesium is also great for physical and mental relaxation and sleep, and in my humble opinion, should be taken by pretty much every human ever. 
Some great food sources of magnesium are chocolate, thank you, there is a god, nuts, tofu, legumes, so beans that you're hopefully already eating because they're a good source of folate, avocados, also a good source of folate, and seeds. Zinc is the third nutrient that I would say is tied up with MTHFR. It isn't a cofactor of the MTHFR enzyme, but zinc deficiency interferes with dietary folate absorption. So if you're zinc deficient, even if you're eating enough folate, you might not be actually getting enough folate. This means if you're stuck somewhere in your MTHFR journey and can't find a way to move forward, zinc could actually be your answer. Zinc is especially important if you're working on fertility because it's highly involved in the formation of healthy sperm and ovum, hormone regulation, and the growth and development of healthy babies. In vivo and in vitro studies have shown that zinc deficiency decreases the absorption and metabolism of dietary folate. That is a direct quote from a research article that was published in uh, the journal called Human Reproduction Update. So next week, we'll start talking about actually supplementing with some good source of folate, like 5-LMTHF or folinic acid. How to start, what to expect, what symptoms you might see, and uh, when to know you're on the right track. So stay tuned and don't forget to subscribe and hit like. Thanks. 